here in Philadelphia. 2023 means it's time for the Cods Lacrosse Championship Weekend. Divisions 1, 2, and 3 on the men's side determined here at Lincoln Financial Field. Home of the NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles, Temple Owls football, and again, this Memorial Day weekend, college lacrosse. Already in D2, Lenore Ryan won its first ever championship. Now it's time for Division 3. Welcome, getting set for Salisbury, head-to-head -head with Tufts, two powerhouse programs with plenty of championship experience. Head-to-head -head here, one game, one title, one trophy on the line. Great to have with us on the NCAA.com stream. Dave Ryan alongside Mark Dixon, former midfielder at Johns Hopkins. So Dixie, unlike our first game, LR head-to-head -head with Mercyhurst, one combined title between those two programs. In this matchup in D3, 15 total titles between these two programs. Salisbury's won 12 under their legendary head coach, Jim Berkman. Tufts has won three, but looking for their first under their newer coach after Mike Daly had a great run. It's Tufts, it's Salisbury, two high-scoring programs head-to-head. -head. This should be fun. It should be, and you want to talk about a tough road to Philadelphia. Uh, th these are teams that had to go through a, a gauntlet of a tournament, and you had their last games last weekend. Salisbury, within a span of 48 hours, had to knock off Washington and Lee, and then Christopher Newport in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. Tufts had to take care of Lynchburg, and then they had to knock off the def two-time defending national champion RIT team to get here 15-11. So this is a tough road. These are battle-tested ball clubs, and these are the two best that D3 has to offer. And you mentioned the championship pedigree of each of these teams. This should be a heavyweight tilt here at Lincoln Financial Field. For Salisbury, 20th appearance in the national championship game. These teams have also met four times in the national title game. 2-2 two -two between the two. The last was in Philadelphia here at Lincoln Financial Field in 2016 where Salisbury beat Tufts 14-13. Two amazing players on the field, Dixie, as well. We can't wait to watch first-team All-American attackman Cross Ferrara, who plays for Salisbury, 85 goals. Jack Boyden, who plays for Tufts, has had a remarkable year. First-team All-American attackman, Iroquois National Outstanding Player of the Year, Turnbull Outstanding Attackman of the Year from the USILA. Not one, but two awards. These guys, Dixie, have combined for 153 goals. That's a lot of goals, and we're going to see a lot of goals. Uh, you know, big, strong athletes out here on the field. A contrast in styles, north versus south. It's going to be a terrific ball game. I mean, all together, 15 All-Americans are on the field here today. Eight for the Jumbos, seven for the Seagulls. Here we go. Ready for lacrosse at Lincoln Financial Field. The winner takes home the D3 National Championship. Mason Cohn for Tufts, All-American face-off man. Blake Malamphy will face off out of Archbishop Spalding High School, Annapolis, Maryland for Salisbury. Salisbury visiting unis. Tufts, the Jumbos, and the home whites. Underway National Championship game from Philly. Malamphy the win, and right away, they've got their ace in Ferrara in the offensive end. And the first possession of the Seagulls. Yeah, big face-off win. Salisbury going to work. They've been here so many times. Jim Berkman has just built a, a dynasty at Salisbury. A lot of proud alums, I know, watching the stream. A lot of support here in the stands. Away we go. Luke Nestor, honorable mention All-American handles here. In between the top of the restraining box and the midfield line. And the first possession with Dowd. Watch 22 in the yellow jersey. An incredible season of 85 goals. Bromwell the handle, first possession here with 35 to shoot. LR won a convincing D2 title game head to head with Mercyhurst. We mentioned this game will be high scoring, but much closer. Let's see. Bounce shot, score, just like that. It's Bromwell. And the icebreaker. Three goals bolt out to a 1 0 lead. Couldn't have started any better for the Seagulls. Just over a minute into the contest, they control the opening faceoff. They work it around, and they they crack the code against this Tufts jumbo defense. Number six, Bryce Bromwell. Just time, space, 
flings it. Lodolo offering, able to sneak it underneath the netminder for the tough Jumbos. Garzon, good shot. Goals are out. Two and one for three. Romwell semifinal win over Christopher Newport. For Salisbury, now the face off, the wing play, the scrum near the midfield line, 50-50 ball, who wants it more? Who's gonna get it on the ground? Still no clear possession, and finally Salisbury comes away with a good track down by DeFazio. Honorable mention All-American pole and wing player for Salisbury. Yeah, you're, DeFazio showing you with that left hand, great ground ball pickup. Love the strategy of batting the ball to open areas, open spaces and just letting your teammates run into it, pick it up. That's exactly what Salisbury did right there, and they're back on the attack. Jacked out. And a bit of probing in the right alley. Watch 22 and yellow. Up top, Ferrara. An incredible first-team All-American season. But not all the offense they've got. Shot is in. Don't count that one from Jude Brown. Another All-American with a spin move. It is a crease violation. And Tufts with a chance quickly to bring it up field here. Tufts with a deep clear here. And the Jumbos are not bashful. They'll, they'll go at it. You see poles, not a, not a great pass. You, you don't want to give it to a pole typically on the offensive end, let alone when they're covered. Taken back by Jackson Woodward. St. Paul's High School, Towels in Maryland. Handles here with a six-foot pole across the midfield line. And Easy pass to Bromwell, the game's lone goal scorer so far. Assist to Dowd on the ice-breaking goal. Lid lifter here in Philadelphia. I mean, we got a good game going. Big crowd, a lot of energy, great venue. And to make it even more enticing, I can smell somebody cooking burgers. Oh, that sounds awesome. Mm. Pierce Ferrara's first touch, righty shot, goes through the crease. Wide and is backed up by Salisbury. Connor Garzon, third team All-American. 13 times this year, the netminder for Tufts has had 10 plus saves. He'll be tested and then some today by this incredible Salisbury offense. Salisbury's been the kings of the south for a long time now. Tufts in, in a northern division northern part of Division Three lacrosse where you've had RIT, them, Middlebury. Jude Brown, great pass, down, great finish. Jack down, goes high, and tallies for Salisbury. And this fantastic start continues for the Gulls. 19-game win streak entering play here today. Great start, two zip. Great sharing of the ball and great recognition and awareness of your teammates of where they are. The Jumbos double, and I love the one more, the unselfish pass. And what I like about this goal is how Dowd steps up field, takes the feed, increases his angle, keeps his feet moving. He didn't just stand there and say, here's your help. He got to an open area, got into the line of sight, an earshot of his teammate. Nice execution. Isaac Thrasher, the assist, goal for Dowd. So two assisted tally to begin the game. And again, similar scrum off the wing play battle. To the right of the Salisbury cage, no clean possession. As the physical play continues, and again it's Woodward with a six-foot pole, comes up with a GB for Salisbury. Nicholas Ransom has had a great year for Salisbury as well. In the nets, again here today for the Seagulls. And Tufts has had no opportunity whatsoever in our first four-plus minutes to get anything going offensively. Yeah, so Salisbury's had to make adjustments on the a couple weeks ago, and that is why you are seeing number nine, Jackson Woodward, with a pole. He has been playing with a shorty most of his career, but due to the injury of Ballard, he's had to bump down to the close unit. He's been a stabilizing force and a big reason why Salisbury is playing for the championship here today. Josh Sanchez, Santa Ana, California. San Clemente High School handles here in the back 15. And Berkman will play. He told us this week, two or three midfield lines. A lot of guys will see action. This number 22 in yellow probably won't leave the field much. Ferrara. Handles here. Near side to Yale lead. 
Trying to create an angle. Jump shot stop this time. Shut down Garzon. All American, a big save. That's a momentum builder for Tufts here down early to zip. Not in love with Ferrara's effort there simply because it was a, you know, a one player possession, meaning he's the only one that had the ball in his stick, worked his way up the side. It wasn't the worst shot in the world, but it didn't get the Tufts defense moving. It didn't get the goalie moving. It didn't fool him at all. Remember when we did this game two years ago, Salisbury against RIT, a lot of one-on-one for the goals where RIT was a little bit more of sharing the ball that both the the first two goals for Salisbury both assisted so I, th I think that's going to benefit them today a little bit better than the one-on-ones Tagler Ferry and Christmas bringing the offensive end and yes finally with Tagler Ferry a lefty shot is blocked doesn't get to the cage and picked up on a GB again at GLE by Salisbury good hustle Simba Makawa and he found that loose change to the right of his goaltender Transition lacrosse for Salisbury back in the offensive end of the box, and they'll reset here. Good defense by Salisbury. And you can see both of these teams are jacked with adrenaline and emotion. You'll see that in these big stage games, in this big stadium, as both teams settling in. Salisbury especially has been incredibly aggressive jumping the ball on defense. Luke Nestor passing. Sharp angle shot stopped. Garzone with a good play on Jude Brown. Outstanding goal scorer for Salisbury, but out of bounds with a long stick. Chance to reset in the stick of Luke Nestor. Here's Ferrara. Dodges. Shorty matchup. On the All American. Pass tight quarters. Trying to hit Jude Brown. Better defense this time, Tufts, but on the outlet, the ride effective, and it goes right back to Salisbury. Goals, high scoring team. So are the Jumbos. Good defenses, good goaltenders. Maybe the two most complete teams in Division Three lacrosse competing for this national championship. Salisbury, 17 and a half goals a game, partner. Tufts, 20 plus goals a game for the Jumbos, but shutout so far. The first half of our first quarter, long way to go. Chase Ferrara has the handle. Long stick matchup this time on him. Checked hard on the play there by Burns. Seagulls on the attack. Looking for a third goal, and he continued this great start. Quick stick try just off target. Bryce Bromwell trying for a second. Bromwell and Dowd have scored so far in this championship game for Salisbury. Tufts defense settling in. Thought they were a little slide happy in their first couple of Salisbury possessions. They got their feet underneath of them. Nestor, shorty matchup, left hand free. Shoots, he scores! Luke Nestor with a rocket. Big goal, Salisbury, 3-0 lead. Yeah, that was a hammer from Nestor. I liked how he set his dodge up. Dodged hard to the right, put his foot in the dirt, spun back left, and as he's coming out of that rollback, the ball's already out of his stick. Garzon took a, a minute to try to pick that up. He couldn't catch up to it. I mean, this is like a, a fastball right down the middle. And you just can't get your bat around in time to make contact. That is what the goaltender experienced on that one. Nice shot by Nestor. 85 goals cross for our up. Brown sensational as well. But so far it's been Bromwell Dowd and Nestor scoring in the game for Salisbury. Trouble off the wing. Battle there along the sideline for Malamfeet. And it does come back to Tufts with a chance to clear up field and get something going offensively yeah they got to get something going down three nothing but with the shot clock with the firepower not anything to panic about but it has been a few years for the tough jumbos on this big stage whereas Salisbury has many a player on their roster who has been in this big time environment before so maybe some nerves and maybe a little bit more of a 
acclimation process for the Tufts players. Boy, the player to watch. 28 in the white jersey, but so far has been quiet with no shots. Frizzoli, work around the perimeter of the cage here. Good Brun, second team All-American. Knocked down, great defense, six foot pole again for Salisbury. They've been everywhere early in this game. John DeFazio, 61-95 from Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. With a really good reach, almost had a pick. Taken back though by Frizzoli and company. 15 on the timer. Tops quiet so far. Brun, the All-American, trying to create. Outside the right alley. Shot clock under 10. Bounce wide. Not really close to the case. Errant. Shot clock would have expired anyway. Fast break lacrosse for Stafford. And a six foot pole, some speed. Cross Ferrara's got it. He'll head to the back 15 to get things set up in the half field. What a first 10 minutes it's been here for Salisbury. With the small sample size I've been able to witness so far, the Salisbury defense looks a little bit more rangy, a little bit more athletic than what I've seen from the Tufts offensive players. Jumbos are going to have to settle in, get used to the, the length and the speed and the aggressiveness of this Salisbury defense, which I'm sure they've seen the likes of throughout 2023. Here's for us first shot. Stopped or the pipe. I've got the iron. It was an absolute rip to the left of Garzone and got pipe as it heads into the Tufts bench. The best break so far <laughs> that Tufts has had in this opening quarter. All Seagulls so far. Has been all Seagulls. We saw that in the first game. Lenore Ryan, wire to wire, dominant win over Mercyhurst for the Division II National Championship. Tufts doesn't want this thing to get away with the, get away from them this early in the game. Drew Brown, good stick work. He's free for a moment. Scores! It was a stick work that got that goal created in the first place. Fake the pass. Spun got free. Win. Barry. Four goals, four different goal scores. What a start here for the Seagulls. Four zip. First two goals assisted. Last two goals unassisted. Just a bad approach defensively for the tough Jumbos. Watch Brown soak the check. Rolls back. Slide doesn't come because I don't think the Tufts defense thought the defenseman was going to be, get beat that cleanly. Brown spins back to his left, puts a stick in his right hand, and whips it past the Tufts netminder. What a start here for Jim Berkman's team. They have not won a championship since 2017. Beat RIT that year at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough 15-7. But this is a program looking for championship number 13. A lucky 13. It's all going well right now. When for Salisbury. Tufts and they won. are crushing yeah. Tufts here at 5 zip. I, I think you need a timeout. If you're the Tufts Jumbos, you have been bum rushed here in the early going by this potent Salisbury team. Tufts, they need to catch their breath. All right, Mark Dixon, we were surprised in game one on NCAA.com, D2. Lenore Ryan stormed out to a 6-0 lead after one quarter and blew out Mercyhurst to win the championship. Same sort of feel here for D3. What is happening to Tufts, a powerful offensive team down 5-zip? Salisbury's been more aggressive, more athletic. Obviously, they've executed at a higher level. But Tufts, no shots on goal so far. And they need to get their offense going. They need to get some defensive stops, and, and now they just have to chip away at the Salisbury advantage. We'll see what Casey Dinofalo, the head coach in year seven. He played lacrosse, football, and basketball at Tufts. He's the only known jumbo to have scored a goal in lacrosse, touchdown pass in football, former starting quarterback, and a basket in basketball. That's legit. And that is something. Takeaway yet again, Salisbury all over this powerful Tufts defense, scoring more than 20 goals a game. Zach Timmons. A second team All American with a nice steal. Great play, six foot pole. Brings it across the line for Glushiko. And yet again, Salisbury has possession. I mean, that was Jack Boyd, first team All American for the Tufts Jumbos, who just 
Got his lunch money stolen by the Salisbury defense. That's just too easy if you're Salisbury. Nestor's got one already. Same for Bromwell, got the scoring going. Free righty shot, scores! Bromwell does it again, give him two. And Salisbury is up by six. How about the Seagull start? Sensational. Half a dozen on the board for Salisbury's here today. A double whammy for the Jumbos coming out of that timeout. You lose possession after winning the faceoff, and then you're unable to stop Bromwell. I mean, look at the lane that Bromwell takes, gets shoved off of his line, reestablishes his feet, and... Where mom hides the thin mints. What a shot from Bromwell. Salisbury is rolling heavy. Face-off win, Tufts, much needed. For the shot, trail check, last second. The All-American Mason Cone... Trying to win the faceoff and score for Tusk, but he got shut down at the last possible moment. That would have been a big juice goal for Tufts. Anything to get the Jumbos going, but instead, it's right back to Fazio. He's got a pole goal in this game already across the midfield line. Guess what, Nick? See, Salisbury got, has got the ball back. Yeah, DeFazio has been impressive so far. Easy to see why he is a first-team All-American. He's great off the ground, excellent in transition, and he can shoot. I mean, that goal that he had was was really pretty. And, and just one of the many notches on the belt of the Seagull so far in this one. Ferrara, doesn't matter, right? When your team is up 6 nothing, it's been relatively quiet so far. He is 0 for 3 shooting to begin the game. 85 goals. Nation's leader in goals, total points in Division 3. Handles here. Lefty shot. Wow. Connor Garzon. Garzona, third-team All-American in D3 this year. Talked about the big numbers. He has really been tested and blistered so far. Garzona that time moving nicely. And a shutdown to his left. Good save on Nestor, who bids for another one. Salisbury right now is feeling it. You can see the fluidity of their offense playing with swagger. And that's the word that I used to describe Lenore Ryan in the first game. Just swagger, confidence, playing at such a high level. Bromwell, too. Been the leader so far offensively. Trying to get free again for a hat trick as he works at the top of the box. Bryce Bromwell, hands are free. Last second trail check to the end line for Brown. He's the assist guy generally from X creating. But an incredible goal we saw earlier in this first quarter. Here's Drew Brown again. A handle to the right of the cage. Skip pass, a little high for cross for but he does gather it at GLE. 25 to shoot. Final moments, first quarter, all seagulls so far. Ferrara goes high, stops. A shutdown save, much needed for Connor Garzon and Tufts. Anything, Dixie, to create some momentum for the second quarter. Terrific save from Garzon and much needed when you're down 6 nothing. Your primary objective defensively is just to keep it at that score. They do a good job of that, but again, look at Salisbury, the active stick, the feet just moving so well. Tagler Ferry almost had that taken away. Nothing has been easy for Tufts here in the first quarter. Zilch. Boyden, the All-American, the National Player of the Year. Creates this time for the back 15. Guess what? Another steal. Pass in traffic. Taken right back in midfield by Tufts. But the pass here one more time. And right into the goal stick on the bounce for Nicholas Ransom. And here comes Salisbury again. Under 20 ticks left first quarter. All Seagulls. Woodward across the midfield line into the box. Ten seconds. One more chance for Ferrara and company with Brown. Talk about a dominant opening 15. Dowd. One already. Final moments. That pass is broken up. And that's the opening quarter from the link. The definition of dominance. 14 shots for Salisbury. Six goals. Only two shots for Tufts in the first 15 minutes. Seagull Nation has to be flying high right about now, feeling good. That first quarter really couldn't have gone any better for Salisbury. One quarter complete in the Division Three Men's Lacrosse National Championship Games.
Incredible first quarter, Salisbury, D3 National Championship game. The leading tough set of Medford, Massachusetts, outside Boston. Six, nothing, second quarter underway, first possession here for the Jumbos. And much needed to get something going in the half field, but balls on the grass again. Toward the midfield line, or toward the sideline, and that is going to be out of bounds. Good effort, the six-foot pole from Timmons, another All-American for Jim Berkman's team with a six-foot pole. That's a big play by Boyden. Nice maturity and discipline using the sideline as a teammate, knocking Timmons out of bounds, getting a much-needed possession for the Jumbos. Chris Miss, a shot on the move. You know, the big guy at 6'5", misses the target. It's backed up by Tufts and a chance here to re-trigger. And a goal here, gets the momentum much needed for the Jumbos. Can't avoid too much of a bigger hole. Boyden's shot, stop, rebound, is in the net, and it's a goal for Tufts. Taglia Ferry on the rebound. Sticks it in for the Jumbos, and finally Dixie there on the board. Big goal off of the rebound. Taglia Ferry, Johnny on the spot with the redirect into the cage. And it starts with Boyden's hustle, creating the turnover on the ride. That's a big goal for Taglia Ferry. Ends up in the goal mouth, but he got tangled up with a Salisbury defender who dragged him into the goal mouth. Not maliciously, not illegally, just guys getting tangled up together. That's why the goal stood, even though the Tufts player ended up in the goal mouth. Face-off win for the All-American Mason Cohn, senior out of San Diego in Torrey Pines High School. That's a big face-off victory in the dot for Tufts. And Taglia Ferry, the second-team All-American, was one of 11 shooting in the semifinals for the Jumbos. Anything is a good thing at this point. Here's Boyd, the National Player of the Year. Shorty matchup on him. His shot is off the mark. Just to get that face-off win for Cohn is important. Well, if you're Cohn, you gotta you got to dominate the dot. You're the first-team All-American. In Division Three, you, you can't let a freshman get the better of you in Melanfi. So, when you, when you have that type of prowess, you gotta you gotta show up for your team. Boyden trying to get free. Tag Lewis Ferry. The goal so far, the one tally for Tufts. In a perfect position on the rebound. Handles here, top of the box. Split dodge move. Six foot pole matchup on Tag Lewis Ferry. Deliberate possession. Shot clock under 20. But well, Tufts love to get another goal here. Christmas. Freight dodge move. Gets free. Side of the net. No goal. Handle Boyden. Final moment. Shoveling in front. Picked off. And that'll do it. Um, shot clock was about to expire anyway. Christmas. The Jumbo fans thought Kevin Christmas had scored. Side of the net. And no tally. Here's Salisbury on a clear. Salisbury again, defense holds. I mean, big man. That's a big dude. Lame shot. <laughs> really, I mean, you know, you're going down the alley, you run out of an angle, bang it to X. But it was short time on the shot clock. Now Salisbury back with the ball in their stick. It's been a few minutes. First possession of the second quarter. Let's see what adjustments, what wrinkles Tufts has made to try to quell this Salisbury attack. Luke Nestor for now. His shot off target. Wide to the left of the cage. Connor Garzon. Certainly tested. 14 Salisbury shots so far. Nestor and company back on possession. Quick shot. Stop. Garzon. Exactly what they needed. Thrasher was denied. Grad student for Salisbury. And here comes Tufts upfield. A chance to clear and cut into the Seagull lead again. That was a gigantic save. And an even better player by, by Sam Sturm. Loose ball, picked it up, was about to go into the crease for an in-and-out violation, and he had fancy footwork and flicked the ball to his teammate to avoid that violation and turnover, which would have given possession back to Salisbury. Rizzoli operates offensive end. Six-foot pole matchup on Sam Frizzoli. That's the return pass, top corner of the box. Tufts in the attack. It was Timmons. Operates left alley. Shot score, Tufts. It's another for the Jumbos. Kurt Brown 
Second team All-Americans got his first. And hang on a second, Dixie. Back-to-back jacks for Tufts. 6-2 game. Bruin coming around the goal left-handed. I liked how he stepped away from his defender. Gave himself some room to get his hands free and his stick in the direction that he wanted to go. The step away, the shot, not bad defense. If you're Salisbury, being provided by Jackson Woodward, but I love that step away by Brune to find the far post. Hold call, Salisbury. And Tufts, again, re-trigger Ethan O'Neill off the wing. You know, the offensive end for the Jumbos. And just like that, after two goals to make things 6-2, the ball again for Tufts. And 20 so plus goals a game, Dixie. Salisbury using a second faceoff man now in Mac Moreland. Sophomore out of Boys Latin in the Baltimore area. So you're going to have to use that two headed monster against a faceoff man like Tufts possesses the first team All American. Tagman Ferris shot, high slot, off target, re trigger again. Brune just scored a moment ago. Okay, for Ransom. Track that beautifully to the goal stick. Here comes the clear upfield for Salisbury. Earlier point for me was it looked like anyway with back-to-back -back goals possessions that Tufts was starting to look a little bit more like a 20 goal per team per game team. Oh, no, no doubt. And they're starting in, to get into a rhythm offensively. I don't think the first quarter could have gone any worse for Tufts. Sanchez the handle outside the box. 6-0 the lead for Salisbury after one. Tagliaferri Ferry and Broon have tallied to begin the second quarter, though, for Tufts to get them back in the game. Here's Brown. Usually sets up. Cross Ferrara. A lot of the assists for Ferrara's 85 goals have come from this guy. 56 in the yellow. Operates here for side GLE. Amazing stick work, Brown spins free again, shoots, scores! One more time, it's tough to stop this guy. One man bat. Jude Brown's. 7-2 Seagulls. Graduate student showing off a high lacrosse IQ and very good acumen. He's got great stick control. Two-handed cradle. Very Canadian-esque. Doesn't go one-handed. Power cradle, really. Draws three white jerseys, spins inside away from the pressure, gets underneath. What a shot. He loves that inside roll. Face-off violation this time against Salisbury, so Tufts has it. Possession and a chance to cut back into the lead, but Brown has been tough. Ferrara has not scored yet. 85 goals on the year, but nothing to date, and it hasn't mattered. Similar to the first game where the big guns were not a huge factor for Lenore Ryan today, but it didn't matter with that huge lead, they never gave up. Balanced scoring, you need depth of scoring if you want to win a national championship on the game's biggest stage. Salisbury showing that here today. Swank offensive end. Good save, again, for Salisbury. Ransom. All-American type season, Jim Berkman told us this year. Eight saves, eight goals allowed in the semifinals. The victory over Christopher Newport. Aggressive play again between the top of the restraining box and the midfield line. And things settle here for Salisbury. A good defense by Tufts. Created a little bit of a loose ball situation. But Jude Brown showing he does more than score points. He picked up a tough ground ball, got it out of harm's way. And the Seagulls are settling in. Ransom, his first two saves of the game. So that'll get him going. Didn't have a whole lot of work there in the first quarter. Nice to have the lead, but you'd rather have a few shots, right? Nestor scores! Razor, 10 yards out. Overwhelms the Tufts goalie in Garzon. The roll continues for the Seagulls, make it 8-2. Salisbury crowd loves it. 
coming from the eastern shore of Maryland. Watch Nestor just get to the center of the field. No help. And he hammers it high to high past the Tufts netminder. The crab cakes are starting to get hand formed as we speak. Are they? That sounds so good. Second team all coastal across conference CLC. Luke Nestor, a career season for him this year. He's just absolutely brilliant. Couple goals here in the championship game. Career highs in points, goals, and assists leading into the NCAA tournament. And of course, the run for the Seagulls all the way to the D3 title game. Lots of stars on this roster, not just Ferrara and Jude Brown. Well, Salisbury year in, year out is a perennial contender on the national scene. 20th title game appearance. Tagli Ferrer tries to shovel shot. Stop again. Save moving well. Ransom, as Dixie pointed out, first couple saves came in a recent possession. And now maybe gaining some confidence as a goalie. I see a few shots, right? Make a couple saves to get going. Yeah, get, get into a rhythm, get into the game a little bit. It's kind of like, you know, goaltenders. You talk about midfielder and attackman. The first time you get checked, the first time you get jostled, that settles you down for a goaltender. It's the first time, you you know, the ball hits your stick or you make a body save. One thing I've been really impressed with Salisbury, their poles, their stick work. First-time grounders. They are, have been terrific on first-time ground balls, not giving toughs. An opportunity to create a scrum. Nestor thinking about a hat trick here in the first half. He and Bromwell each have a couple goals. That shot ripped off target. 41 on the timer here on this possession. And a re-trigger for Bryce Bromwell in the near corner of the box. All the numbers dominant for the 12-time champ so far. Bromwell's shot is backed up by Salisbury. Ten turnovers so far in this game for the Jumbos. And they're not being careless with the ball, it's just that pressure for from Salisbury. B dies there. Dixie, sorry about that. His shot is off target. He's got great moves. Hand as he moves well in the back 15. It's another. Bryce Bromwell's got three. Ray trigger to his right. Righty blast. Tufts overwhelmed. Two. Third time was the charm. That's the third straight dodge from behind the cage to the right hand side up the alley. The first two were wide. This one, it's Bromwell. 6-1. I like how he uses his body as a screen. We've seen him with a couple shots here today where he tucks the stick back, hides it, and then comes with a big overhand release. Beautiful shot. 20th appearance in the championship game. Jim Berkman told us this week the first time they were there in 1991. He has been a part of this program for decades. Incredible success trying for a 13th title here today. And with players like Bromwell and Nestor, not just Cross, Ferrara, and Brown scoring, this could be a convincing win here in the D3 title game today. Well, again, you know, you, you've got seven All-Americans on this team. Hmm. Dow's a first-team All-American midfielder. You've got other offensive players in Jude Brown, third-team All-American. Luke Nestor, honorable mention, All-American. You know, this is a team that is well-rounded offensively. And I tell you what, Bryce Bromwell so far in this one playing like an All-American for this Salisbury Seagull team. He leads the way. He's got a hat-trick so far for Zoli to Eddinghausen. And the first shot for Max Eddinghausen is off target. Good lefty setup, though, from Frizzoli. So much like Mercyhurst in the first game, it's got to happen incrementally if you're toughs here. Piece by piece to get back in the game. It starts right here on this possession. Not going to go far with great saves like that. Ransom, big stop. Able to shut down Swank, who had a good look in the right alley. Ball's out of bounds along the end line, taken right back by Salisbury. Ransom with an incredible save after a great pick by Tufts, and then some collisions behind the cage. Some bodies flying, some seagulls slow to get up. Simba Mawaka, Makawa, a D-Midi, took a, a wicked hit 
Looked like he had his cocktail shaken a little bit. Got up, ran off the field. We'll see how he responds to that. But this Salisbury team, they are playing with a ton of passion. Riley's trouble in the game here. Passes to Cross Ferrara, trying to get that first goal for the national leader. 85 tallies coming in. Great pass, great shot. Great goal again, Charlie White. Joins the party. His first, Junior, Rocky Hill, New Jersey. And the Seagulls are pouring it on here. Up to double figures, make it 10 2. Charlie White with a lefty hammer. And Salisbury's just doing an incredible job because they won some individual matchups early in the game of drawing slides. And that is just White with time, space, and he tattoos the upper 90. What a shot, what a feed. Beautiful ball movement, unselfish play for Salisbury. After attacking the Ferry and Brune had scored for Tufts to make it 6-2 and make things a little more respectable. Another run for Salisbury to widen the gap to eight. Things unsettle off the faceoff. Tufts a chance to get things going for Boyden. Nice split dodge move. Stopped again. Great save. Ransom has been all over the tough shooter pack here today. That is turned over at midfield. Taken right back here by the Jumbos in a huge hole. As Bruins going to re-trigger after. We have a timeout. Ransom settling in. He's made four, three or four really big saves here in the second quarter. Timeout at Philly, 345. Jumbo's 3-2 all-time against the Seagulls. All five meetings have come in the NCAA tournament. As we mentioned, Dixie at the top of the stream. Four of those in the NCAA championship game. Tuss' first ever title in school history, 2010, under former coach Mike Daly. A really tight 9-6 game in Baltimore at MT Bank Stadium. This meeting, NCAA championship game, fifth in the title tilt, has been all Seagulls. What has been the key behind this wide margin of victory so far. We just aggressive play and, and great execution. Just owning their matchups, sharing the ball. Ransom now stepping up with some great saves and they've competed at the faceoff dot, an area that you thought Tufts would have a solid, substantial advantage. It just hasn't happened yet for the Tufts Jumbos. You know, it's 9-5 in that category, but that's not a bad statistic when you're going up against a first-team All-American. Jack Boyden trying it going. The tremendous, prolific goal scorer for Tufts. That shot is over the crossbar, but backed up by the Jumbos here. Tufts shot up for the first time in a quarter this year. Six zip after one. Now, with a couple goals to begin the second quarter. Over the shot off target from Tommy Swank. Senior from Madison was... Uh, Oh, always say Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Connecticut. There you go. Great Daniel Hand, town. probably, right? Great Daniel Hand High School. Town, right. Here is Christmas trying to create. Big body at 6'6. Six, six. Triple team with a shot off target from Swank. A really good setup as Christmas took three defenders to slow him down in the left alley. It is backed up by Tufts. I mean, he's so big, he looks like Jokic out there. Huge. I don't think, even if the Celtics win that series, they can stop him and Denver. Unbelievable. Great setup, great goal. Bruins got a second. Darting from X, quick stick shovel, box. Close, their third of the game. Very pretty from Brun. Love the front swing. When you see the back of your defender's helmet, that's when you cut. Brun catches it, and with flair. How about the underhand to underhand? Underhand feed. Underhand shot, drills the top shelf. Tufts, can they build on that goal with pizzazz? First multi-goal scorer of the game for the Jumbos. Face-off violation It's going right back here to Salisbury. 
Jack Boyden's first point of the game. After Melanthi took the majority of the draws in the first quarter, Mac Moreland has come in and taken more here in the second, and he has had a little bit more success than the freshman. So we'll see if Salisbury elects to give Tufts a heavy dose of, of Mac Moreland. Jack Dowd, one of six goals scored by Salisbury in the first quarter. He's on the field here on this shift. Nestor has had a big game. Bryce Bromwell has got three. Here's Dowd, top of the box. Bromwell, bidding for another one. Low to high blast, just off target, is backed up by Drew Brown. I mean, Bromwell is, is strong with that stick in his right hand with two, two hands on it. He just fought through a couple of checks. Cross for our shot. And a good speed dodge move from X. Got free, but shut down. Garzon, much needed save for Tufts. Now they'll try to clear. I thought that was a little bit of a force from Ferreira. You have 80, 85 goals on the year. Yeah, you haven't scored. You want to get on the score sheet, but do what's made you successful. Second time we've seen Ferreira with a little bit of a selfish possession. Point to the right of the cage. Well, create something here offensively. Shovel pass. Speaking of creative offense for Tufts. Put the shot on the bounce. Maybe a pass. was just intercepted easily by the Seagull defense. No problem at all there for John DeFazio with a six-foot pole. DeFazio has been impressive so far here today in the open field, down close. Great on ground ball. Such an active stick. And he's a lefty. You know, when you have that kind of talent with 70 inches of titanium and you're a lefty, you're that much more dangerous. A Hall of Fame coach, all-time wins leader, Kyle Lacrosse. Jim Berkman takes a timeout with 109 to go in the first half in a 10-3 Salisbury lead. All Seagulls today, timeout. In So, Mark, we're talking about Salisbury and Jim Berkman, the winningest coach in NCAA history. 35th year, 610 victories, and a member of the National Lacrosse Hall of Fame for good reason. Part of such an incredible history at Salisbury. Yeah, I mean, really, you know, the early 90s is when Salisbury got on the map, started contending for national championships. 1994 is when they broke through, beating Hobart, appropriately enough, a school with you know, multiple national championships. And of course the Statesman then moved to division one, but really the gold standard when it comes to division three lacrosse, Salisbury Seagulls year in, year out, always in that conversation for a national championship. 19 game win streak heading into the D3 title game today, 22 and one record. The only loss, Gettysburg way back on February 25th, <laughs> a long time ago. For this Jim Berkman-led team and his message to us this week in our conversation, he felt really good about the architecture of this year's Seagull team to get back in the winner's circle today. Yeah, and, and look, keep an eye out for that Gettysburg team. That's a, a program on the rise. Peter Toner uh, leading the charge for the Bullets after spending years as the defensive coordinator for Jeff Tambroni and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Here's Nestor. Outside the top of the box, shorty matchup on Luke Nestor. After a few seconds, they get things going, but the pass is airmailed and turned over back to Tufts. Yeah, Coach Berkman won't be happy with that, but he hasn't had a lot to be unhappy about here in the first half. Jumbo's up 10-3. We'll see if they can make one push. They do have a timeout left. Not sure if they're going to have enough on the clock to use it. Might just have to play through. Final seconds of the half. Ayers with a six-foot pole carries in. Looking for a pole goal late. Rebound. At the end of the half, Bruins got a hat trick on the rebound tally. Point two. Halftime locker room here for Tufts. That'd be just what the doctor ordered for the Jumbos. Credit Michael Ayers for coming down. He was under pressure and he kept his head with, about him. Didn't freak out when he got doubled.
spot is Brune, who has been terrific so far in this one for Tufts. Natural hat trick for Brune, three in a row, continues a huge season. There's the face off, there's the horn, 30 minutes complete. Overall, certainly a dominant first half for Salisbury, but a couple of Brune goals here in the second quarter at least keeps things interesting. You feel a lot better down 10-4 at the break than you would have at 10-2. So this is a Tufts team that will not go away. They're talented, and just like we said in the first game, the first five minutes of the third quarter are going to be critically important if the Jumbos want to make a run at the goals. Two multi-goal scores for Salisbury, led by Bryce Bromwell's three goals, had the hat trick on six shots, and Kurt Brune a hat trick in the second quarter for Tufts. At halftime, Salisbury 10 and Tufts 4.
10-4 Salisbury lead on Tufts, getting set for half number two of the Division Three National Championship game. Dave Ryan, Mark Dixon, our entire crew, great to have you streaming with us on NCAA.com. So Dixie combined these two teams, 44-1. and Tufts 22-0 entering this game today. Really haven't been tested throughout this incredible run. They beat RIT, the two-time defending champs in D3, in the national semifinals, 15-11. That's one of the closest games they had all year. But Salisbury's had their number from the beginning of this game until now as we check our stats through 30 minutes of play. What have yeah. been the big keys in your mind? Uh, well, the, you know, eight turnovers in the fourth quarter for Tufts. So right away, that's that's tough to overcome. Uh, it was a 6 nothing lead for Salisbury after 15 minutes. That second quarter was even, 4-4. Four, four. So Sal Tufts is going to have to find a way to chip away at that lead. They're going to have to be more dominant on the faceoffs. They're going to have to adjust to the speed aggressiveness and athleticism of the Salisbury defense and they're going to have to generate have to generate more shot opportunities and don't look now but Ransom the goaltender for Salisbury has upped his game and is playing at a really high level so the Jumbos they've got their work cut out for him here in the second half if you're Salisbury continue to play with the swagger continue to play with the urgency National Championship. National Player of the Year, Jack Boyd. No one for one. Three shots. The guy this year who has put up 154 points on 160 shots. Other players for Salisbury have really stepped up. Bromwell yeah. had a great half. In addition to Charlie White, scored at the end of half number one. Luke Nestor was excellent. Jude Brown had some spectacular moves in the opening 30. The Seagulls came out firing and just really running over, running through, running around this Tufts defense. And then when the Jumbos did get the ball, it was incredibly difficult for them to generate any looks. They finally settled down in the second quarter and were able to get some things going, particularly impressed with Broome with a hat trick there in the first half. But Bromwell from Salisbury was terrific. And again, late you know, in the second quarter, it was Ransom who got the hot hand between the pipes for the Salisbury Seagulls to keep the Jumbo's at bay, but they scored that, la that late goal right here. Off of the rebound, Brun with less than a second left in the game. Is this the play that can galvanize the Jumbo's and get them back in this game? Jack Borden, 68 goals. Cross Ferrara, 85 goals entering this D3 National Championship game. Between them, no goals and two assists. <laughs> That's been if they're over in their shots. Have not been a big factor. Is that the defense doing a great job against the best offensive players? I think so. I mean, I think that this team is, they've come to play, and they're doing a wonderful job. I thought Tufts early was a little tentative, and against a team like Salisbury that always has that confidence, that could be a death knell for you. And Salisbury, they sensed it, and they jumped all over the Tufts. And like I said, they bum-rushed them. So 30 minutes of lacrosse left to be played. Let's see how this plays out. The first 15 minutes doesn't come back to haunt them. Sixth appearance national championship game for Tufts out of Medford, Massachusetts near Boston. 20th time for Salisbury. As the Seagulls try for the Baker's Dozen lucky 13th national title. Face off midfield dot. Here we go, half number two. Then Tufts in initial possession. Try to create some kind of momentum down by six. To begin the second half, critical touch, I think, here, Dixie, just to get a couple good shots against Salisbury and goaltender Nicholas Ransom. Well, n without a doubt, and they get what they need in the faceoff win from Cone, and now the offense needs to go to work. Boyden shot attempt off target. Go for three so far for the All-American. Broon was the big factor offensively in half number one for Tufts. That shot side of the net. And Ransom gathers inside the safety of you know, the nine-foot diameter of the crease. Didn't like that shot. Tommy Swank coming up field. I mean, if that shot is taken another 40 seconds into the possession, I'm cool with it. But off of the, you know, just trying to get it off of the restart, just thought it was ill-advised. And that was an opportunity that Tufts wasted. They're going to need a beat defensive stop here right now to, to keep this a six-goal game. Zach Timmons, good job to get it across the midfield line with a six-foot pole for Salisbury. Right back on possession here. We'll see if Nestor and company. Jack Dowd had a great first half. 
dominant, along with Bromwell and a hat trick. Ross Ferrara, can he get going offensively? Brown, two goals, Ferrara, none, first half. That in itself is surprising. Brown stick work, brilliant. Ferrara trying to get on the board, stopped. Nice save, tight quarters, Garzon. Now the clear up field for Tufts. Sometimes a big save like that against the nation's leading goal scorer can put you in the right mindset to make a comeback. Certainly can't hurt. And that's a big save that the Jumbos needed. They got the defensive stand. Look at Ayers. I like him with the ball on his stick. Trouble. Top of the restraining box. <clears throat> of course, just as I say that, he gets deep in the Right on cue. <laughs> Brady Mancha. <laughs> Charlie Tagliaferri, Danville, California. He had one in the first half. Save again. Christmas this time, a blast. Got some space at 6-6. Shut down nicely, though, by Ransom. Coming off the eight-save game in the national semifinals. Salisbury, just a blanketing defense against high-scoring toughs. Undefeated Jumbo score more than 20 goals a game and only four on the board at this point. And that's a credit to the Salisbury defense and Nicholas Ransom between the Save. Remember, he didn't have any in the first quarter. Tufts only took two shots. Neither were on goal. So he's made seven stops here in a quarter and change. Brown back 15. Here's Nestor. You know, right of the cage. Garzon trying to lock in here against this high-scoring Salisbury team. Nestor free. Left. To the right of Garzon, backed up by Jude Brown. No matter where Salisbury dodges from, they're getting leverage on the defenders for the Jumbos. They're getting it good spaces and good angles to shoot. Whereas Tufts, you can't say as much about the Jumbos. Brown crisscrosses with Thrasher. Handles here right of the cage. Down up top. Dodging. Thought about creating a left-hand shot. Bromwell, two-man game, free. Closest to it. One second, though, left in the shot clock. Dumps into the corner, and the ride set up here for Salisbury. Empty possession, long possession, using all 80 seconds. Good defensive stand again by Tufts. So they're getting what they need from the defensive end. The last two possessions for the Jumbos. Quick shots early in the shot clock, and, and neither one of them. So the shot by Swank was ill-advised. I thought Christmas got to a good spot on the field, but the shot location uh, left a lot to be desired. Playing catch with Ransom. You've got to really settle in and try to chip away one at a time against the Salisbury offense. Here's Boyden. Spin, shot, stop. Ransom has been awesome today. Shut down that time on Regnery. In tight quarters, DeFazio, six-foot pole, the All-American across the midfield line. And Salisbury again, a chance with some speed from their pole to set things up in the half field. What a move by Boyden to get inside. And Ransom denies him on the doorstep. And then DeFazio with that clear. There's been a lot of really good players on the field for Salisbury today. Number 17 in gold, to me, has been the most impressive in terms of his skill set. With that, with that big pole. I'm with you. He's been on the present. A lot of GBs, a lot of cost turnovers, and wreaking havoc against Tufts today. He's been a big factor. Salisbury back in the attack again. Sanchez operates outside the right alley. Now it's Brown. Hung up at X. His defender hung up anyway inside the crease. Jude Brown navigates. Incredible passer. Cross Ferrara. Lefty shot. Block. Never got there. And the 85 goal scorer. Still shut out today. <clears throat> that one didn't make it to the cage. Good move. I like that was his best dodge of the day. I mm -hmm. like how he dodged Agreed. into his defender, spun the space, just couldn't get it past the defender. And Tufts, Boyd and company. Here's Christmas, top of the box. Freight train dodge again, but the pass. Not good. They have really struggled offensively to get in sync in the half field. Another miscue. And the turnover gives it right back to the Seagulls. 11 turnovers 
in the game for tough so far. Eight miscues for Salisbury. First one of the second half for the Jumbos. Just another empty possession. Strub for Brown. Defender left behind for a moment. So Brown's got a... Wide to the right of the goal is backed up by Tufts. And the Jumbo's a chance on a clear. Nice little feed there, a little whirling dervish. That's a high risk, high reward type of situation. If it goes, bench feels good. You got a seven goal lead. If it misses the cage like it did, you, you don't have backup. Wall bound, six foot pole, cross the line. Sets up a fellow pole, much needed pole goal. Tufts. The tally they want it. Frizzoli. Freshman from Massachusetts buries it. And Tufts has the first goal scored of half number two. Yeah, Ben Frizzoli is the one who took the shot at the end of the first half. Rebound came to his teammate, Brune, and he finished it. This time, showing that high bouncers will go. Love the placement. Love the high bounce. It was going to take a special shot to beat Ransom. That was it. Tagli and Ferry had the first goal of the game for Tufts to begin the second quarter. Brune had three in a row. And now the pole goal scored by Frizzoli. So a chance for a second time Dixie in this game for momentum for Tufts. But Salisbury does have the ball at the faceoff. And Malamfi taking the faceoffs again for Salisbury. Good win, but also soaked up some checks. Was getting chopped at by Cohn. Now we're seeing the Jumbos double a little bit as Salisbury makes their substitution changes. I like that aggressiveness by Tufts. Force the issue if it's in your area for a little bit. Good handle of the pressure for Salisbury. Luke Nestor dodges outside the left alley. Brown at X. We know he can do with passes. We've seen two goals in the first half. As the box lacrosse type mentality with incredible stick work. The cutter. Garzon saw it. Now the outlet important here for Tufts to try to create some good opportunities and higher percentage shots in the half field. Yeah, great save by Garzon. He has come up big so far here in the second half. Pass. Boyden scores. Starts on the defensive end for the Tough Jumbos. Garzon with the save. That was not a bad shot by Salisbury by any stretch of the imagination. High quality, high angle, great save. And then the give and go between Boyden and Brune. Love how Boyden just kept his feet. Cutting, decreasing quickly. And sweet finish. Cross cage, plants it in the top corner. All-American National Player of the Year, two USILA D3 honors in the postseason for Boyden. Uh, Toronto, Ontario, his first finally of the game for Tufts, much needed. And all of a sudden, the first two goals, second half, Dixie go to the Jumbos. You get right back in it, only down by four. They might have not won the first five minutes, but they have won the first eight and a half of this quarter. So important for the Jumbos. This is what they need to do to get back into the game. Last title for Tufts came in 2015. We know Salisbury with the 12 titles. So many times they've been close. So many times they've won it. 20 appearances in the championship game. Ferrara the handle. Six foot pole in the All-American. Cross Ferrara. Double team. Angle. Free. Shoot. Scores! His first. Awesome attackman for Salisbury. Lights the lamp with a low righty rip. That one's unlucky for Garzon. He read it, tracked it, just couldn't make the save. Looked like it hit off of his left foot and caromed into the cage. Ferreira sets his feet. Worm burner. Again, Garzon was on it, but just couldn't get enough. That's got to feel good for number 22 in gold. When his squad needed a big tally, he comes through. Four and three for seven in the semis in D3 against Christopher Newport. 
Jim Berkman told us this week, no one wants it more. No one works harder than the best player in the nation. Offensively, Cross Ferrara got his first. You're right, Garzon read it well, got a piece. Good hustle, 50-50 ball. Comes right back to Salisbury, at least for the moment. Can they find it near the midfield line and control and settle things in the half field? This is a great play by honorable mention All-American, Graydon Lashako. He created a loose ball off of the faceoff, then gets it out of harm's way with some nifty footwork, great stick work, was being ragged on by a pole from Tufts. So it's just greasy plays, dirty plays like that that are going to make the difference between winning and losing, and Salisbury getting plenty of those this afternoon. That's what it looked like. Tufts is going to create some momentum with a bunch of goals. Instead, the answer for Farrar, then the faceoff win and hustle play near the midfield line. Tight quarter spin shot. Garzon, big save. Got a piece of that. And now the defense will try to clear. Ooh. Isaac Thrasher with a fantastic opportunity for Salisbury to score the Seagulls 12th of the game. That was a risky proposition. Great ground ball, but a, a pass. A little bit of a lollipop across the face of the cage. I thought that had a chance to be picked off, but nice job by Tufts. Love how Garzon came out of the goal to help his teammates on that ground ball situation. Sophomore California. Tagley Ferry has it back 15 here. 45 on the shot clock for Tufts. Down by a nickel, but anytime you have the nation's player of the year in Boyden, a lot of possibilities. Not one so far today. Finally, this time, the pass, Tagliaferri, the finish. Boyden, Tagliaferri, bouncer. Tough scores again. They play well in this third quarter, make it 11-7. Well, again, it, it starts with defense for the Jumbos. Kyle Adelman, with the great handle, takes the ground ball, gets it out of harm's way, and then you get it down. And I love the give-and-go action or the, you know, the pass and replace offense of the tough jumbos boyden draws a crowd throws it down one more to taglia ferry who just slips it past ransom cuts it to 11 7. tufts face off win now right back in the offensive end which can be trouble when you're facing some of the best players offensively in the nation Including Broon, the second team All American, had a natural hat trick in the second quarter. Now, go here, Dixie. Things get pretty fun to watch. Absolutely. And, and, and Cone's got to be Cone. He's got to be a first team All American at the faceoff. Pipe on the shot. Rebound loose in front. Who wants the loose change? Taken back by Salisbury. Grab there. The long stick. Fantastic game for Woodward, the grad student from Towson, Maryland. Now, Cross Ferrara handles the back 15. He'll wait for offensive-minded players to come on, being hassled by two jumbos and a double team, hoping for a turnover. And Ferrara hits the brakes at X. Yeah, you can see Tufts jumping the ball, doubling it, when Salisbury clears it, and they go to make their defensive substitutions. The, the jumbos are forcing the issue, trying to get some extra possessions by harassing Salisbury's offensive players. Ferrara did a nice job to get out of trouble. Shot deflected wide. Garzona, piece of that <clears throat> comes right to Brown. No control right to the cage. And a fresh 60 off that shot. Steal though. Tufts on the move. Now transition possibility for Tufts, who's trailing. Long stick shot. A bouncer is over the cage. A good attempt there. Ben Frazzoli. We know he can do it with a long stick. He took a pop as well. Got smoked just upon release of that shot. Slow to get up. Point in the reach rigger here in the back 15. What a pickoff by Joey Waldbaum with the long pole. Looking like Darius Slay out there of the Eagles. I like that. Beautiful <laughs> pickoff. Good comparison. Tagler Ferry goes low. This time a nice stop for Ransom. Saw it on a bounce. Woodward and company on a clear try. Heading down toward two to go in the third quarter. Couple times, Tufts a chance to cut it to three, cut it to two. Trouble to the midfield line. That's out of bounds. 
Nice job by Tufts. Harassing the short stick for Salisbury. They're creating havoc. Creating chaos, and it's paid off. They have trimmed this six, what was a six-goal advantage down to four with an opportunity to make it three. They hit a pipe, but now Tufts starting to get into a rhythm. Look a lot more comfortable offensively than in the first half. Regnery handles top of the box here. Well, let's keep an eye on 28 and White. An outstanding attackman for Tufts. Kurt Brune, hat trick first half. I was smelling burgers before, Dave. I'm smelling something different uh, now. I, I, I'm getting hungry too. We're getting close. We're getting close. I know. Brune, one handed shot. <laughs> Scores. What an effort. What a play, Kurt Brune, one handed. Defender all over him. Had enough to score another for the Jumbos. 133 to go in the third. 11 8. Tough shows life. Well, Tufts, you got to give the Jumbos a lot of credit. They took that goal by that man, Brood, at the end of the first half, and they've used it to their advantage, and they've built on the momentum. Look at the wrist strength of this bad boy. Gets funneled inside, gets squeezed, but yet has the wrist strength to deliver it one-handed over the shoulder. Kurt Brood showing brawn with that shot. So Boyden, 68 goals entering play. We saw the numbers for Broad. He's 60 plus goals as well. Off the wing it. X. Tough scores it. Big one for Tufts. Mason Cohn, your first team All-American, wins it out the front door. I don't know what that guy's story is, but he is fired up for the Tufts Jumbos. We talked about a first team All-American playing like that. Wins it out the front door, cruises right down Patterson Avenue, and sticks it past Ransom. Look out, here comes Tufts. Mason Cohn, New Canaan, Connecticut. Huge tally under 90 seconds now, fading third quarter clock. We've got a new game here. Six zip after one now, 11-9. Big face off off the wing. An effective play for Salisbury. Mackenzie Moreland, one of a couple of face-off men Jim Berkman told us this week we'd see for the Seagulls. A big draw, face-off dot midfield. But now a two-goal game. Cross for our company, final minute of the quarter. About 30 seconds left in the shot clock. Huge face-off win for Mac Moreland. It's a product of the Inner Circle Lacrosse Institute. Brown shoved from behind. Push call coming here against Tufts. Charging toward the cage. Push there by Kyle Adelman, the senior from San Mateo, California. He's going to have to sit here. Tail end of the third quarter. Tufts fans don't like it, but it's the right call. Imagine that. Someone from Boston complaining about the officials. <laughs> Push clearly. And credit Brown. Your team makes needs a play. He's a playmaker. Third-team All-American goes to the cage, gets shoved. An opportunity for the Seagulls after they have been counterpunched here in the third quarter. So a back-and-forth game. Looks like we're set up for a great fourth quarter here in Philly. Cross Ferrara, plus one here in the EMO. Six on five for 30 seconds. Ferrara for Dowd. Down passing. Brown finishes. Quick stick. EMO goal. Jude Brown. What a pass. What a goal. 12 9. Quarter. Big one for Salisbury. In lacrosse, you're taught from an early age. If you do the right things and you make the right decisions, the ball will find you. Jude Brown draws a penalty. How about that look from Dow? Beautiful skip pass through the vacant area and is able to finish. Beautiful job. Cross Ferrara and Jude Brown partner have combined for video game like numbers. 219 combo points entering this game today. Hat trick for Brown, only one for Cross Ferrara to get up to 86 goals to lead the nation, but he'll be very happy with his three goal lead. 
Still 29.2 to go, third quarter. A lot could happen. We've seen some unsettled lacrosse, pole goals today. Lots of action off the fast break. Brown's amazing. What a play. This is an area, New Orleans won that last faceoff, which was gigantic. That allowed Brown to go to work, draw the penalty. I like the use of the two-man faceoff rotation here for Salisbury. Moreland, head-to-head, -head, Cone, the All-American. Look that ground ball. Traffic. Wow, what a play. Oh, Swimming, oh, oh. elevating. Mason Cone, that was spectacular. Oh, oh, oh. That and was like right back here for Tufts. That was like you last night at the, at the restaurant, <laughs> picking up the... What'd you have there? Mussels? You had clams? Oh, you had some Seafood. Stuff. Lobster was amazing. Last Absolutely night. Absolutely fantastic. Bro through traffic. Taken away last second. Stop near the horn. Third quarter complete. What Big play in the nets for Nicholas Ransom with a save at the buzzer to keep this a three-goal game, setting up what should be a great fourth quarter, Dixie. What a great 15 minutes of lacrosse there. You saw Tufts cut the lead from six down to two. But then Salisbury answering like a team on a mission to win their 13th national title. Jude Brown draws the foul, then finishes on the extra man opportunity. We have got a terrific fourth quarter on tap. Seagulls up by six after one and after two quarters, but only a three goal lead after the third. Exciting fourth quarter on the way. Getting set, fourth quarter here, Lincoln Financial Field, Division Three Men's Lacrosse National Championship on the line. Salisbury trying for its 13th title. Tufts in the championship game again. These teams have been already four times in the title tilt. Meeting number five. We'll see who rises to the occasion. Big face-off win for Tufts starting the fourth. We have Ryan Mark Dixon with you, former midfielder Johns Hopkins. We already saw Lenore Ryan win its first ever D2 title today here on NCAA.com. How about the D3 crown? Who takes it? Another face-off win for Tufts. Got to go to work. Salisbury with some momentum there at the end of the third quarter with the Jude Brown goal. How do the Jumbos respond? Taglia Ferry trying to create here. Boyden. Offensive leader. Spectacular season. One goal so far for him. Pass errant. Turned over. Try to hit Regneri with it. Another turnover. Emblematic of the first half and first quarter for Tufts. Cross Ferrara, a back in. Changes hands and waits for offensive minded players to come on the field here. I like his decision not to shoot it. I thought he was going to take it. Like the maturity to pull that out, discipline to pull it out. Bromwell works with Nestor. Free, Nestor shoots, he scores again, Luke Nestor, pounds it, lefty rip. First goal, fourth quarter goes to the Seagulls, make it 13-9. Yeah, Nestor with that lefty dodge has been a handful all day today. He's really good at getting a first step, then gaining leverage, and getting to the middle of the field to finish. Once you feel the defender on your back, You've got so many options. Do I feed it? Do I shoot it? Right there, Nestor sees the slide. It's a little slow. Slings it past Garzon. And all of a sudden, Salisbury's back up by four. Three and six shooting for Nestor in the game. Another hat trick here for the high scoring Seagulls. Bryce Bromwell had one. Brown has been the offensive man of the game so far for the Jumbos. One player, Tommy Swank, he scored in 48, excuse me, 41 straight games going back to last season. 
Today, he's only got one shot. That's it. No points. Boyd and free. Righty shot off target there, Mark. It is backed up by Tufts. And Kurt Brune, the second-team All-American senior from Chevy Chase, Maryland, has had a huge game so far. Brune takes it back. One-hand shot. This one off target. We saw him score one hand in the first half. Track down Boyd in the corner. Good hustle, Salisbury. And the Seagulls get it right back on a clear try here. Nice job by the shorty. Good effort from Mancha. Yeah, Mancha's smart right there. Ball's rolling. It's when and where it goes out. So Mancha made himself bigger, made himself wider, and made sure that that tough attackman chasing him couldn't get anywhere near the ball, or at least closer than he was. Mancha helps on a clear for Dowd. And now Nestor, who's been awesome today. And company back on the field for Bromwell. Yeah, two in the first quarter, one in the second for his hat trick. Thinking about another one, swims through traffic, shoots, he scores! Bryce Bromwell, spectacular move for Salisbury. That. Wow. Stick work, physicality, finish. Bromwell, I thought he made the pass. Comes down. First thing is he notices some confusion amongst the Tufts shorties. Who's covering me? That allowed him to get a five to seven yard running head start. He's going downhill, and it's just Olay defense. Throws a stick check. Bromwell tucks it, sticks it. Galls up by five. Four for eight shooting Bryce Bromwell. Face-off win much needed for Mason Cohen and company. And Tufts back on offense, but the lead now at five. And a great start to the fourth quarter here for the Seagulls. Jude Brown, after that goal scored by Bromwell, cramped up a bit, needed some help from his teammates to get up. Stretching the right calf, but... Looks like he's all right to remain in the game for Salisbury when they get the ball back on offense. Yeah, you can see him, too, with that big brace on his leg. So he's dealt with some injuries. Can Boyden get a touch here? This offensive possession. Barone in the slot's been the man. Got four so far. Most effective for Tufts. Lefty rip. Stop again. Eddinghausen. The shutdown. Shot clock reset to 60. I mean, Zach Timmons has just erased Tommy Swank for the Tufts Jumbos here today. Again, 41 straight games with at least a goal. Only one shot today. Brun shot. Pipe. Rebound. High slot. Brun trying to find the GB to lose change. Instead, it comes out for Tufts and Tommy Swank. Aforementioned by Dixie. Maybe gets going here on this possession. It's all going right at the moment. For the Salisbury defense. Brune creates with a good pass. Return feed. Brune shoots. Pipe again. Iron. And all the way out to the Tufts bench. Really first clean look for Swank today. And man, what a sweet shooting stroke. Unlucky though as it kisses the crossbar and shoots out. Sam Frizzoli, sophomore, Westwood, Massachusetts. Offensively controls. Knocked down by the defense. Near side GLE back on his feet. In the back end looking for a step on the defense. It's tough. Watch for Brune, 33 and white. In the slot area set up. He'll drift off to the right now. In this half field set. Shot clock under 30. Tufts looking for another. Boyden. Frizzoli. Speed dodge. Righty shot. Push way off the ball. Great defense. Short stick there from Glushiko. Good defense so far for Salisbury during this sequence. Only 15 to shoot for the Jumbos. Pass errant beyond the reach there of Lewis Timmons. Now the 50-50 ball near midfield. Who's going to get it? Goose to head. Still no clean possession. Taken back by Salisbury and Thrasher. And Brown remains on the field despite those cramps. With about nine and a half to go, standing between Salisbury and a 13th national championship in school history. I mean, what a crafty ground ball from Isaac Thrasher. It looked like the Jumbos were going to be able to save possession 
but a lazy ground ball, and Thrasher just reaches over and scoops it onto his side of the field, then a one-handed grounder. That is great work. We mentioned the dirty plays, the greasy plays that aren't glorious but are effective, and that's another example of Salisbury. Nestor for Bromwell, down, backs it all the way toward the midfield line. Spread here for Salisbury, taking its time. Trying to use some shot clock down, down to 35. Up by five in no hurry. Bromwell back 15 for Brown. Now the cutters engage. Brown spins. Brown stops. Garzon matched him. Stick for stick. Well done. Not left pass for Tufts. And a chance here to break up field with Ayers. The six-foot pole for the Jumbos. Trailing pass. Errant. Turned over. That's a problem. Two poles operating offensively. And a rushed possession for Coach Sinopolo's team. Yeah, credit guard zone. That's in-game adjustment. Brown's beating them twice on those in-close shots. Look at the handle, though, from the Jumbos. That is a nifty Wald pick bomb. up by Waldbaum. Man, on a bounce, Ooh. made a steal. But things unsettled. And Tuss really needs to get things calmed down offensively in the half field. Jack Boyden, the senior from Toronto. Will he come alive here in the final eight minutes of regulation? Yeah, time becoming of the essence yeah, no for question. Tufts as that clock bleeds away down by five. Both teams, both their timeouts left. The Jumbos, though, they've got to get something on this possession to have hopes of a comeback. Tagliaferri, two-man game with Boyden. Jack Tagliaferri, two of seven shooting in the game so far. Operates to his right, near side GLE, taken away, but a flag flies. Penalty coming against Salisbury here and Jeremiah Stafford. To the naked eye, looked like a tough call. Looked like a clean pickpocket. Going to have to get a look at the replay. Yeah, I, I, can, I can dig that. I probably would have gone loose ball there. But that stick is around the head and neck area. Good call by the officials. Either way, Tufts ball. This just happens to be a man up opportunity. Stafford might have been cramping too. He had trouble getting off the field. EMO opportunity. Much needed here. Tufts would love with the 30 second call on the technical to cash in Brune for Taglia Ferry. Brune's been the man. Looks for another. Huge hammer for Brune. His big game continues. He's got five. Tufts was playing five on, uh, excuse me, five on four. Extra man offense as Salisbury shut off Boyd. And that allowed Brune to get some time, space, low to high, takes ransom on the elevator to the top floor. Beautiful shot. Great adjustment by Tufts. A lot of times when teams shut a guy off, they extra man units can panic and they don't execute. Jumbos do that. Cone, face off win, shot, Boyden stopped. Looking for back to back Jack, save Nicholas Ransom. Meets the moment. Now the outlet here for Salisbury. Brune, no goals in the tournament, Dixie against Lynchburg and RIT, the two tie defending champs. Get out of here. Five today. Wow. To lead the Jumbo attack. That is shocking. And I'm not being dramatic that is i mean the way he has played today the way he has put the ball in the back of the cage and you know he's picked up the slack for swank who's been limited well shut out so far in this one today so kudos to broom one loss between these two teams tufts 22 and 0 entering the d3 final in major jeopardy here one reason that guy crossed ferrara the all-american the righty blast the rocker step and the finish. Another big one for Salisbury. One step closer to a title, 15-10. The, the Tufts defense just looked a little disorganized on that sequence. I, I couldn't tell if they were in man or if they were in zone. One thing I did know was at 22, you can't have that casual approach, first off. And second, when he's above the goal, with his hands free like that, it's trouble. Finds the far post, nice little jump shot. 
Nice work, Cross Ferreira. 28th overall pick PL draft by the Chrome Lacrosse Club this year. A D3 pick for the PLL. Pretty impressive. Four-time first-team All-American. What a career for Salisbury and Cross Ferrara. <laughs> Tufts taking a shot there with no backup. Just trying to make something happen. Five-goal deficit approaching the six-minute mark. Six minutes left in this game. Here's Dowd. One man clear. Three white jerseys all over him. Golfs it ahead, hoping for a successful ground ball to a teammate. Has that to Simba Makawa briefly. Great pressure. Tufts, good hustle sideline. Salisbury's going to have it with some chance to use a lot of clock here. Waldbaum again, though. Second team All-American. 6-2 out of Denver, Colorado. Been really impressed with his play today. John DeFazio, Mountain Lakes, New Jersey native. Helps clear for Dowd into the offensive box. And Ferrara will take his time at X here. Up by five. Now the Seagulls are soaring now. And you got a penalty push. call. Yeah, you got a push on Tufts. It's going to be against Ethan O'Neill, the freshman midfielder, with a shove in front of the cage off ball. And it puts the Jumbos down a man. Yeah, he shoved Isaac Thrasher of Salisbury intentionally into the crease. Flag flies, and you kill the play immediately because anytime an offensive player enters the crease, play is dead. Gonna see number three. A little love tap right there. It's kind of like uh Kind of like what you do to me when it's time to pay the bill. <laughs> a little shove in the back. Like, hey, who's got shove it? Shove you toward the this, bill this so guy. you take it. Your credit right card, here. is that what you mean? 30-second <laughs> technical call on the push. So, man up here for Salisbury. Wouldn't be surprised they don't even shoot. Yeah, you don't need any more goals. Use the 30 seconds to your advantage. And then you got the ball and a chance to use even more clock. It's all about time and score now here for the Seagulls. You know, we talked to Jim Berkman this week about the architectural plan of all these titles going for championship number 13. He said, we don't get the players that Hopkins gets, that UVA gets, that Duke gets. We don't have these huge D1 bodies who come to us as national high school Americans. We develop guys, and they've done an incredible job over the years of just that. He's got a great coaching staff. They're buttoned up. They, they operate at a very high level, and it shows with the product year in, year out. Here's Ferrara, there's a goal, hat trick. Cross Ferrara's got another one. And Salisbury can feel it. They're patient, they pounce, they convert. 16-10 Seagulls on the verge of another title. Feels like it was a short time ago that this was a two goal game and Tufts had all of Old Man Mo on their side. Ferreira just does a nice job of getting inside. Dodges on the EMO. Tufts had to extend out a little bit to force the issue. Great finish from the All-American. 88 goals on the year to lead Division Three. What a talent. All three goals in this game have come in the second half. Face-off win. Cohn and company here. Brewing the back in a lefty shot is blocked, never got to the cage. Yep. Recall a couple minutes ago, Tufts had an opportunity in transition. Boyden took a shot, and the location just wasn't great. Ransom with an easy save. That was a little tougher right there, but you got to tip your cap to Ransom between the pipes for Salisbury. That's his 15th save of the game. He's been necessary today. He oh, has yeah. been needed to come up with big stops. That time the shutdown on Tommy Swank. The All-Americans had a tough day for Tufts. Same for their amazing goal scorer in Jack Boyden. A great start, just like the D2 game, Lenore Ryan, all over Mercyhurst with a huge victory. Same in this game, 6-0 after the first quarter, 10-4 at halftime. You're right, big run made at 1.11-9 on the cone goal. Chase shot. This one's shut down. Yeah, that's Josh press Sanchez. Out the double team. Yeah, I, I, if I were him, you got to take that extra step to increase your angle or, or or hold it. But with a six goal lead, you can take chances like that. Ben Frizzoli 
Freshman pole helps clear across the midfield line. Tufts badly in need of just that. A shot and a score. Will it be enough is a question. Cam Del Cristo, Madison, Connecticut, has got a tally here for the Jumbos. Late going to make it 16-11. He went to the Hopkins School in Connecticut. Madison guys normally are Daniel Hand boys. But Del Cristo, nice effort, gets inside the defense, is aware that there's a pole bearing down on him, protects from the trail check. The cage, nice individual effort for Del Cristo. You can see with a muted celebration that Tufts can feel this might be an insurmountable deficit. We'll see. Cohn, All-American faceoff man, does have another draw win at the dot at midfield. And basically, it's got to be make and take. It's got to be a goal on every possession with under three to go in regulation. Tufts has the faceoff man to, to get the possessions they need. They just got to come up with the scores. I got another one there. Jack Regneri subs in, faceoff win, blast it right alley. And back-to-back -back Jacks, all of a sudden at 16-12, there is still 246 on the scoreboard. Regneri, a freshman midi out of Florida, Benjamin School. What a shot coming out of the box, on the run, downhill. And he sends a dart to the far post. with himself that he didn't track that one and make the save. 29th of the year for Jack Regneri entering play as the fifth leading scorer on this incredibly talented offensive Tufts team. Loaded at 20 plus goals a game. Good play off the wing, taken right back. Bromwell, double team and a timeout call. Jim we had all the way yeah. on the field to alert the officials with possession in the box. He wanted timeout. We had a collision between Malamphy of Salisbury, Tagliaferri of Tufts. Both of them worse for the wear. Shaken up, slow to get up. Berkman takes that timeout. Two and a half minutes left to go here in the ballgame. Timeout in Philly. Salisbury has been in the national championship game in Philadelphia three times prior in school history. Last time, 2016, beat Tufts 14-13. Lost to Cortland in overtime in 2006 and beat Middlebury in 05. Trying for more history for Jim Berkman, that remarkable program. What do they have to do to finish it out here? Just kill the clock, really. And Salisbury goes with Ferrar Ferreira with the ball. Tufts with a slow double, empty net, as the keeper is out of the cage. He is in the defensive end of the field. I say that because a lot of times teams will put it, the goalie down as an attackman and put a shorty or another pole, excuse me, a shorty down here. Berkman senses danger to save possession for his Seagulls. Bromwell trouble double team. Jim Berkman, second and final timeout used in the second half. We'll take another timeout here from the booth in Philly. 16-12, Salisbury a lead. Salisbury trying to succeed the two-time champ RIT Tigers. Under Jay Kuhn won it in 2021 over Salisbury. And last year, East Hartford RIT won it again to finish out a 22-1 season. Cabrini in 2019. 
Looks like Salisbury's going to put their name on that top of the list, Dixie, with an incredible season. They All they have to do is kill the clock. Play back it away. Cross Ferrara. Trying to run away from the defense here. Use clock two to go in regulation. And that is empty. Shot clock at 40. No timeouts left here for the Seagulls. Brown can't find the handle. Tough trying to take it away. Garzon wow. out of the net. Jude Brown, great hustle, has it back. He's been impressive all game long. Stoppage in play. Not sure what we have. As you mentioned, Salisbury out of timeouts. The official stop play there. We got some I have to imagine it's a, it's a timing issue of some sort. So when Salisbury called that timeout, they had 55 seconds on the shot clock. It now says 56. So it's got to be an issue with the shot clock, I'd imagine. Minute 43 in the clock. Did Tufts have possession? Reset it for Tufts at 80. Yeah, that would be the, but, you know, but then again, if you, even if you reset it to 80, I, I don't think, uh, again, now I got to do math. 80 minus 56, carry the one. 24, 24 seconds <laughs> didn't come off the Definitely clock. not 24 seconds. <laughs> Shots 49-42 for Tufts in this game. On goal, 28-27 in favor of Salisbury. One for two, the EMO for the Seagulls. One for one in the game for the Jumbos. Ground at this point of the game. Shot clock has been reset to 25, 25. seconds. Got it. Press out again. Garzon. Net is empty. Ferrara wants another. Doesn't pull the trigger. This is more time down. for Dowd. <laughs> Brown and Dow play catch. Seven on the shot clock here. Net is empty. Bounce shot. Scored down from deep. The dagger. Jack down. On a bounce from way outside. Salisbury is going to sell it away. 17 12 with a minute 20 to go. Yeah, that should do it. And the discipline of the Seagulls in this time killing exercise you get it down to a short shot clock and down so if it misses okay tough's gonna get the ball back anyway but he finds pay dirt name of the paper date for the prom scores a goal cohen face off win in the late going here i love your expressions <laughs> best part of my year an injured Salisbury player off the faceoff. Last thing you want to see this late in the game. Blake Malamfeet, freshman Annapolis. The combo that they've thrown at Cone. Not a 32 total faceoffs entering that last draw. So 23 wins for Cone of the day. And that's not surprising based on the All American status. But sure. they've done enough. Yeah, to get some possessions away from Tufts. And Malamfi was the one. He took a hit on his last faceoff. It was really slow to get up. Jim Berkman coming out, as well as some other faceoff men for the Salisbury Seagulls to check on their teammate. Looks like there were, it could be a cramp. The way that they're lifting and bending the leg. Beautiful day in Philadelphia. Been a fantastic weekend here. Mid 70s. No rain in the forecast again for Championship Monday. As Duke and Notre Dame will compete for the Division I national title. But we did see some cramping on semifinal Saturday. In a yeah, we. I mean, it is. It's 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 great weather. Don't get me wrong, but it's hot. And this this. Again, unfortunately, looks like it could be a little bit more serious than a cramp as he's being carried off the field by his teammates. 
Hope it's nothing serious. Hope he's okay. Malfi 6 of 20. Face off tot. Moreland 3 of 12 combined. But they've done enough. Tagliaferri shot. Stopped. Fitting. Ransom in the final minute. With a nice save for Salisbury. And now it's a matter of the clock expiring here for the Seagulls. Hoffman across the midfield line. This game has been decided. I know it's frustrating for Tufts coming in undefeated. Keep it classy. No need to take runs at dudes. That's a nice play by Garzon. It was a great play. Really nice Romwell. play. And now he's cramping up and down in the near corner of the box. And that was incidental contact. I mean, yeah. that's just that's just a, a two Good guys effort. Good effort. trying to make a play. I think they bumped knees is what it looked like. The old knee knock. Call out of bounds on Bromwell. On Garzon. Right? Bromwell has a re-trigger along with Dowd. Final moments here from Philly. Dowd's had a great game. One of many stars. Two and two for four. Taken away last second here by Tufts. Adelman, six-foot pole, has got it. Taglia Ferry dancing across the midfield line with some speed. He's going to check up, not go out of bounds, but sort of emblematic of the day for Tufts. Just not quite there. One step off. One step too slow. And that's it. It is over for the 13th time. Salisbury has won the Division Three Lacrosse National Championship. The Seagulls, sensational in 2023. Salisbury does it again. Terrific game by both teams. Tufts. Disappointing loss, but nothing to hang your heads about. 22-1, and one, nothing to sneeze at. A Salisbury team that came out of the gates firing. Jumped to a 6 nothing lead and didn't look back. Was tested, was challenged. Jumbos were able to cut that Seagull lead down to 2. But Salisbury answered and had a final run to claim their 13th title. 20-game win streak for Jim Berkman and Salisbury to finish out the year. They finish 23-1. and one. The lone loss way back on February 25th on the road in Pennsylvania against Gettysburg. They finished the season in Pennsylvania here in Philly with a national championship win over previously undefeated Tufts. What a season for Salisbury. Champs again. What a feeling. This is a proud program, rich history, ton of tradition. Really, it, you feel like they almost have a, an annual reservation here in the Division Three National Championship game. Last title came, what was it, 2017 for the Seagulls. Six years for Seagull lacrosse is kind of like decades when you've had the success Salisbury has had. Total team effort. And they get the job done. Down two and two for four. Bromwell four for eight shooting. Had the four goals to lead the way. Bryce Bromwell and not cross Ferrara, who did finish with a hat trick, did a lot of his damage late on three of 12 shooting. Faceoffs were solid. And the goaltending today for Ransom, really solid as well. He had. 16 saves. Dixie won a year for Jim Berkman. The title back to Salisbury. Great year for the Salisbury Seagulls. And really this Division Three tournament is a gauntlet, especially the quarterfinal and the semifinal round. Played over the course of one weekend. You know, really, when you talk about Division One men's lacrosse, coaches will tell you the hardest game to win is that quarterfinal game. And Salisbury not only had to win that one, but they had to win the semifinal to advance to this championship game. And theoretically, you could have said that they were underdogs coming in here today against Tufts, and they get the job done. Boyd and Swank, a combined 140 goals 
for Tufts on the year. Salisbury held them to one. Boyden had one tie. That's it between the two. Amazing defense, amazing offense. In the end, Salisbury takes home the title. Congratulations to the Seagulls. They win their 13th Division III National Championship in Philadelphia.